I'm from the University of Cape Town, and uh, I'm the primary technical uh, person implementing what we ambitiously call the African Research Cloud. Um, the African bit is still a bit vague. It's currently only South Africa, but we're hoping to expand into the rest of Africa in the next few years. So um, a quick agenda. I'm going to talk about our partners who's already working with us, um, the software and technologies we're using, and then three of the projects we're already hosting in SA, and then what the future will be. So our partners are mostly research institutions. We've got a few universities. So uh, obviously University of Cape Town. Um, we're one of their founding members, and we provide currently the core services for the project, uh, compute and block storage. Uh, we do actually provide object storage as well, although that's not our primary focus, so we've got another university that does that. Um, that would be Northwest University. They came on board from the very beginning when we expressed some interest in building this infrastructure, and they said, well, they're already building something similar. Why don't we just throw um, our hardware and our resources and our knowledge together and um, expand it from there? Um, so about six months after um, deploying the initial pilot, we um, got in touch with one of um, our in, a, a new institution or a body that was created. Um, they're focusing on SKA research, and they're called the Inter University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy. Um, very long name. Basically, what they're focusing on is uh, data intensive research. So it's not just astronomy. They've actually got some um, projects in humanities and um, digital libraries, but they get uh, quite a big funding because they're um, a big project, got big names, and they're in contact with SK and the like. Um, so they're currently our largest investor. They've um, contributed uh, about the same amount of hardware as UCT has contributed. Actually, it's just a little bit more than what we have, um, mostly compute. So they've bumped up our specs quite a bit. And then because of that, they're also governing the project for us because they've already got contacts with the research groups and everything. So for the interim, they're, they're helping us planning our roadmaps and um, moving forward. And then we have uh, North we uh, University of Western Cape. Um, currently, they're not providing any hardware support as such, um, but they're providing technical support and skills towards some of the projects that we're hosting um, on, on this infrastructure. They have, however, made some compute available, which we will be implementing uh, probably later this year. There's a few things that we need to sort out first. So software and technologies, um, most of the stuff you should already know, Ubuntu, um, we, we originally went to Canonical, asked them to help us and get, um, do a quick skills transfer. Um, the day that they walked out the door, we decided it was a good skills transfer, but we would like to implement these technologies ourselves. And that's when Northwest came aboard as well. So we um, took their stack, took the documentation they gave us, and rebuilt it to make sure that we could reproduce this. Uh, some of the other technologies, yeah, OpenStack. So that is our cloud provider. This is the infrastructure as a service solution. So this is what creates the virtual machines, gives us the um, tools to create block storage, present that storage to virtual machines, and even uh, manage some of the object storage. Um, block storage and object storage is all hosted in Ceph, which is another great open source project. Um, no need for a SAN or any of that. You use standard off-the-shelf servers. You um, put disks in them, and it builds a scalable, redundant, um, resilient storage platform. And then Docker, we use quite extensively to host the applications on top. It's a nice way to package applications, version the applications, and make sure that when the researcher is running it on his laptop, on his cluster, or on our infrastructure, it looks and performs the same way, and there's no difference in using it. So the first project we, we earmarked was Galaxy. It was a quick win for us because there was already a community in SA using this. They just didn't have any hardware to, to host it on centrally. So we, took, we said, well, we'll provide the hardware you um, built the resource platform and the researchers that will be using this. So um, it's just a tool set for um, intensive biomedical data analysis. Um, it's been running on Arc. They've used it in the, um, in the science, uh, Mozilla Science Global Sprint. And some of the researchers are using it to test their workflows and stuff in an environment where they don't break their own installations. Um, 
but obviously we want to grow this community and we need to make the platform scale automatically. So um, with one of, uh, one of the things we'll be doing, and it's coming up on one of my latest slides, is we will be joining Sapphire. Um, we've already had some talks with Guy, and through that we will gain access to Edugain, which means we will be able to scale this community out quite quickly. And these are just some of the members that's working on it. Um, it's a large list. The, I just want to mention that um, the first person is from Northwest University, I think, yeah, and the second and the third person. Um, then the fourth and the fifth person is from University of Western Cape. Um, Warren, I think, is also from Western Cape. Uh, Timothy is from UCT. So you can see this project's already um, being almost all the members of ARC is working together on this project as well. And this is what we're trying to do is trying to get the researchers to work together. Um, so, as I said earlier, I'm mostly involved in the infrastructure service side. So I don't actually get to play with the projects on top. However, I um, got to get started on um, Arcade, which was one of the first astronomy projects we, we built on, on Arc. Um, and that's why it was called African Research Cloud Astronomy Demonstration Project. So the idea of this project was to take the first step in some meerkat science for um, the idea researchers at UCT. So we want to start building reproducible pipelines and set up a collaborative space where they, um, there's a standardized workflow for doing the standard um, image analysis that they're planning on doing. Um, so it will be focusing mostly on astronomy work cases um, once again, the tools we will be using is Docker to package the, the applications. Um, the pipeline tool we'll be using will be Jenkins, because um, that's got a nice new um, integration and a, a codable pipeline system. And then um, most of the research will be run through uh, Jupyter Hub and um, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, the idea is just to create an end-to-end -end imaging pipeline, so one of the researchers already structured the pipeline and given us a vague idea of all the steps that's involved. Um, most of the software we've already picked, so they'll be using CasaPy, which we're just packaging in Docker containers, and um, we've got an API through which to pass the parameters to the apps running in there. Um, and then the idea is to transform the data that's coming from Meerkat into usable images that we will pr um, uh, push back to the repository at SKA for future analysis. Um, and then a few things that we're trying to achieve is to just prove that this kind of workflow can be run on the cloud and um, it will be a benchmark for some of the future projects that will spin off from this. Uh, in this case, the project is mostly a UCT-based project uh, because it's one of our own researchers that came to us. Um, and so all the members are from UCT ex with the exception of John Wu, who was an international student was seconded to us for three months to help with some of the development um, then the other one we're doing is HPC as a service. Um, the idea here was to give people access to a small scale HPC of their own that they can um, stack up and destroy quite quickly to start developing their applications and making them scale over multiple compute units. Um, so it was, it's based on Elastic Cluster, which is a project from uh, University of Zurich. Uh, we've just added a few extra bits and pieces to it to make it um, capable of running on our infrastructure, take into account which of our nodes has actually got um, Mellanox interconnect so we get fast throughput, and then um, to give it access to some of our data stores as well. Um, and then there is specific customizations in the Ansible cookbooks uh, for the astrophysicists that's using this to just install their software. But it's fully customizable. Whatever software you want in there, you can push in there and it'll install its standard HPC cluster with um, talk as your process scheduler. Uh, so basically to create your cluster, all you have to do is run a script to create a few security groups, um, run another script to create a data disk where all your data will be stored and that will be shared between all the um, nodes in the cluster. Um, a small config which has just got some username and passwords in there that you want to use in the cluster and then you start it up. So basically create your security group in your network, create a disk, um, do the config, and then it's just Elastic Cluster start. And talk CentOS, just the, we're using CentOS with the talk sheet. Um, so you've written your application, it's running well on this, but you want to test it a little bit further. So you can just extend your cluster. So just by adding six more compute nodes to it uh, with a one line 
and to stop the cluster is also just another line. So the future for us, uh, obviously, as I said, we need identity federation. Otherwise, it's, we don't want to go through the work of trying to um, uh, identify people and give them access. It should be sh um, shared between the universities. Um, we're also implementing a project which we call RAS, um, Research as a Service. It won't actually be Research as a Service just yet, um, there, but it will provide an easy to access entry point for researchers that want to start getting uh, used to open source tools and using it. So we will provide a web um, portal which will only require HTML5 browser and that will then spin up the different software packages if and as required by the user. So we will pr publish stuff like our um, uh, we'll have no SQL databases in there. We will give access to um, other research tools and then they can just run it there. It will store their sessions and their data persistently over time. And if they want to create a copy of that stack on their local machine, we'll give them access to all the software for that as well. And that's about it from me. Thank you very much.